Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Underrail. In the last video, Gabriel Angelos defeated the Rat Hound King in his lair. That was awesome. No, no contest. No contest. We then completed the abandoned laboratory in Rail Crossing and gained whatever that electromagnetic pulse discharge capacitor delay thing stop stop all electronics in a targeted area item and brought it back to real crossing we also leveled up to level 14 and we grabbed a feat in quick pockets allowing me to swap items whenever i access my inventory it reduces the cost of such by 50 percent and it gave us an extra inventory slot now we can carry around some flashbangs i feel a lot better being able to carry around two grenades with me Originally, when I was making Gabriel, I forgot that this belt even existed. So, and I, I'm gonna find it very difficult to not wear this belt. But I had planned on using a utility belt for most of the adventure. Or one that would help me find traps. I didn't expect that I'd be using the lifting belt. But now that I've, now I, I remember it exists, there's no reason for us why we shouldn't use it. Before I go... I have enough food for this episode. All right, so today we're just going to do some exploring of the tunnels. And let's see if we can at least clear the path leading back down to rail crossing. So we're going to be going south and kind of hugging the west wall, as it were. We'll also map out every single room we come to and mark which areas we haven't explored. Looks like the Praetorian Guard is holding the fort from the Faceless. And we will not be killing Faceless if I can avoid it with Gabriel. It's... You know, I just don't want to deal with what will end up happening in the Deep Caverns. <laughs> I just... I don't want... I don't want to do it. Maybe the next time, if we play through the game again, we'll make a character who will do it. But that character will have to be more combat. Even he'll have to be min maxed more than Gabriel is. If I'm if I'm intending to do that. Because faceless gaunts, they are gonna be tricky. From the one or two we saw fighting when we were down there last time. They, uh, it looks like the Faceless Gaunts apply all sorts of different poisons to their targets. Have a really high stealth rating and will be very difficult for us to actually kill. So, for our build with Gabriel... I was originally going, and still may, end up taking both Juggernaut, Nimble, and Armor Sloping. It's tricky. If, I, if I'm if i going to take all of those abilities, then let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about Gabriel's build for a bit. So, first, Juggernaut gives us an extra 25% life if our armor penalty for the suit of armor we are wearing has an unmodified, after we're wearing it, uh, armor rating of 50% or, or better. So what this means is that this suit of armor would give us an extra 110 points of life if we were wearing it. Nimble was something I intended on taking. Nimble makes it so that it lowers the armor penalty by 15% and increases your dodge and evasion. Sorry, by 15%. No, that's correct. By It increases your dodge and evasion by, I think, also 15% if your armor rating is at zero. Armor rating will never be at zero with Gabriel, so we're not going to benefit from that. But that armor penalty drop is very, very nice. And in fact, if we had Nimble right now, 
it would give us four entire points of movement. <laughs> Effectively not worth the feat. But, if we combine it with armor sloping, armor sloping reduces the armor penalty of any metal plates that we use by, I think, 35%? And we could level it twice to make it 40% total. We may be able to get some steel armor down to 50% at that point. It also would affect the helmets that we make. So overall, we would probably end up about with a 65, maybe 70% armor penalty total. As opposed to 105 that we have at the moment. Combined with Nimble, we might actually be able to keep like 20 points of movement. And I think that might be worth those feats to, you, um, to gain it. We'll, I'll probably give it a try because I can't think of a whole lot of other feats I'm interested in with Gabriel. Actually, that, that's not true. There's one or two other just basic feats that would be handy for us. And around the corner from here is a lunatic battle. Let's go ahead and try killing them. So, let's, let's do this. Jumping bean. Sprint, enter combat, move up. And there they are. Alright, so, let us throw a frag here. Let us throw a flashbang. And charge. Oh, that's a shame. I don't want to be gibbed, so I'm going to Adrenaline. A bunch of garbage on that guy. Even more junk on this guy. We'll break down the bits. What do we have on the freezer? An okay dagger. A 9mm weapon that's useful. That's worth a qu quite a pretty penny. The armor will be worth quite a bit. We get some poetry. We want all of his stuff. Alright! Now what's in the locker? Nice! We wanted everything from that from that squad. I killed this squad last time that I was using Gabriel as well. And by that I mean the last video, the one that I lost. Effectively, what the reason why I redid the last video that the... the ah. The last video's theme was killing the Rathound King and investigating that one place. And that was because uh, I lost that video in the end. I had to redo, reshoot, re record, replay that entire thing. And because I didn't get that one random encounter against the Iron Heads, I decided that I was going to clear the path up to Core City to get the experience points that I needed. We'll just break this down as well. And so I did this battle in exactly the same way. And I remember commenting how much I really enjoyed having that extra inventory slot. I think thematically, we should be using uh, EMP grenades and flashbangs, right? Those are the types, I think. It's It's been... So, I haven't played 40k. Warhammer 40,000. In a very, very long time. It has been many, many years. Last time I played was back when 3rd edition was out. And 4th edition had just been released. And I hated the new rules for 4th edition as a Tyranid player. The If you're fearless and lose combat, you, you take automatic uh, deaths. That was so, so dumb. I hated that. Because you had a group like the Space Marines, with, uh, and they shall know no fear, that didn't have that effect. And then you had fearless people who also know no fear, but their effect was completely different. And plus, if you lost combat, every single squad took those, took those wounds. Which meant that if I lost combat, which was often the case, because I would throw my big powerful units in with my Termagants to bog them down, the enemy would kill more Termagants, and then it would be considered that they won the fight, my big troops would take wounds. It was the dumbest thing I could ever think of. And I swore off 40k when, I, when those rules came out. I remember leaving a Scything review on it. Saying that they could not possibly have tested this, uh, this version. 
I got banned from uh, from the forum for it. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. They also made it illegal for me for you to field special different types of gaunts. So in the past you could mix mix and match the type of weapons you put on your on your gaunts. So I had a bunch of six point uh, gaunts. They had scything talons and that was it. Um Termagaunts would be I think the same points. I think there were six or seven points for a ranged weapon. Spine fist gaunts were five points for basically something that would just bog down the enemy. And I, but I liked having a whole squad of melee, and so my my gaunts were six points each. And in a game of Warhammer 40k, you generally constructed armies the way at my local game store. We played the games were what were the the highest ranking tended to be 2,500. My Tyranid armies, I liked the troop choices, because I wanted to field a swarm of enemies, because I found it fun to field that many, and my opponents loved it, because they get to destroy, they get to use their big AoEs and their artillery and blow up whole handfuls of gaunts. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, one second. Um, crap! I have to go back, because I don't know what I did or did not explore over there. Uh, over here, we'll say, uh, D-N-E... Down. But the new rules made it illegal for me. Okay, hold on, wait. So, at six points each, you could, and you were allowed to have 32 units in a squad. So, I fielded, I think it was size, size 30? I think 30 or 28 was the size, oh, there was no passage east here was the size of the troop choices I would have. And that would only be about mm, 300 points for that many units. Is that about right? I think it... Was it less? Was it spine fist gaunts I chose? One second, I need, I need my calculator. Calculator. This is very important, everyone. This is very important. So six points each. Oh, was it really that cheap? Is that how much? Six times... Oh, yep, that's right. All right, so the total cost came to 192 points. Wow, I remember writing that down in lots of books from my, uh, my army, my army, uh, books. And so, 192 points for 32 units. And so, I would field three squads of those. And... It was terrifying for my enemies to suddenly see such massive troop choices. And I hadn't even put down anything else. Like, it was a single HQ choice you had to put down first for your for your deployment onto the... Oh, I actually thought about this as well. So just in case you're unfamiliar with what Warhammer, 40, Warhammer 40k is, it is a miniature game. Uh, I was a huge fan of miniature games way back when. And in particular, I really liked Warhammer 40k. I wanted to use the the Tyranids. The Tyranids were a were a I don't know I don't know quite what to call them. Lots of people call them bugs, but we didn't. I don't ever think we looked like bugs. Just nightmarish looking monsters, not demons. We looked kind of like dinosaurs, like Velociraptors, but smaller. Some of them look like insects, but they were it was very weird. I recommend you just go look up pictures of them to see what they look like. And I played back in 3rd edition, when and when 4th edition just came out, and then I stopped altogether. And so, you could play the army one different, several different ways. I, in 3rd edition, loved playing swarmy armies. And we get to go first, but I'm going to let them get close to me. Right, and so... It's a miniature game, so you, you... It was a very expensive miniature game. <laughs> very, very expensive miniature game. And so, I spent... Uh, must have been a, a few thousand dollars into the game with, uh, with all the models I possess. And so... I was a big fan of the Swarm. In the, that... In that game. Nice. Dead. And so, my army would consist of one HQ choice. Generally a flying Tyranid. Uh, a tyrant, I think is what they were called. I would choose a squad of warriors with wings as a fast attack support choice. I'd have another squad, a heavy 
squad of Tyranid Warriors with Venom Cannons, a squad of, I think, six of them. One or two Carnifexes with dual-linked... Oh, sorry. Th two Carnifexes. One was uh, melee and cheap. The other one was ranged with two twin-linked Venom Cannons. I'd, ha I'd have three squads of Gaunts, 32, cheap. The only purpose they serve is, is to get to the enemy and bog them down with numbers. And in those squads, there'd be a Hive Node. I suppose I'll talk about that for a little bit. Um, back in 3rd edition, you're, you needed to field uh, H, mm, units that had Synapse, is what I think the ability was called. Synapse, so your squads had very low morale of your, your units. I think the morale was like 8 or something like that. But, if they were within a certain range and in inches from a unit that possessed Synapse... They were considered fearless, and this meant that they could not break in combat, they would not run away, and, and especially in melee combat, that meant that the enemy couldn't wipe out a whole squad of them, as long as they were within synapse range. You could also give the squad, every, I think it was, for every 10 units in the squad, one of them could be outfitted with something different than the rest of them was outfitted with. Uh, a very select few upgrades were allowed, in particular for me, I used Rending Claws, which will allow me to try to get through enemy armor and tear apart vehicles, and I think they're called Hive Nodes, or Synapse Nodes. This would not give the unit in Fearless, but it would raise their mor morale to 10. I'm going to break apart this. And that was helpful, just in case the unit ended up being slightly outside of range of a unit with Synapse. Units with Synapse were your Hive Tyrants and your Warriors. I have no clue if the game is played even, uh, if the Tyran if the Tyranids play the same way any longer. Nice, and we cleared the way to Rail Crossing. Well, let's head out east then. Last time we were out exploring, we adventured through some tunnels. This time, I think we'll venture through some passages. So when it came to the... And, so, and sometimes my armies would have even more than that. Uh, I liked fielding a squad of 24 uh, gaunts with... What were they called? Oh, I can't remember. There was a special weapon that had assault, and it could fire it... It would do... It would... Two times the number of attacks of the creature. I can't think of what it was called. Wow, it's been so long. I actually didn't think I'd ever forget the names of things, but I totally, totally have. Um, I forget what this type of gun was, but I fielded a squad of gaunts with it, and that would give me like 48 attacks at range. And it was, and it was, uh, let me re-roll any wound, any attacks that failed to wound the enemy were re-rolled. It was particularly strong, and that group also got. Um, it was there was an augment I could give to my gaunts to make them plus one strength, which I gave to them, and they were particularly nasty. Uh, the first time my enemies would, they would ignore them, because it was a smaller squad, and because ranged, they were like, "Oh, Tyranids, Tyranid troop choices. They don't have great range. Not not good range attacks anyway." But they did. You just had to know how to build a squad to be able to do that sort of thing. And this, by the way, this is the place we're supposed to be for the dude. But unfortunately, we don't have a lockpick. So we can't get through that door. So we'll have to come back here later. Tim, that's a mine. Don't walk on the mine. <laughs> uh, right. So I... Uh, wait, what was I talking about? Why was I talking about any of this? I can't remember. 
<laughs> I can't remember. Oh! And we're under a... A critical and we're dazed. And I think there's someone else right in front of us. Crippling strike landed on us. So our hammer will not be very efficient any longer. Not a good chance to hit him. And we're, cri and we're crippled again. Okay, let's heal. Let's use some morphine. Let's throw a flashbang. And crippled again. And now we're even having trouble hitting him with this weapon. Let's sprint. There's a trap around here somewhere. That should have blown it up. I think to be keep it. I don't like that hit chance. Oh, I think we're going to die here. I don't think we're going to be able to kill both of these guys. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to. I can't do it. Those crippling strikes are just too tough for me to deal with. He's getting through my armor with every single attack he's using. Okay, finally, screw you. Oh, we're netted. Might be a trap directly in front of him. Surprise, I'm immune to those. Three turns incapacitated. Oh, that was a crawler trap as well. These guys are going all out with what they're using. <laughs> One. Nice. Well done, Tim. That was close. We had to go all out in order to win that fight without retreating. It's a decent pit, um, crossbow. We'll take the rest of this and just leave it in a barrel somewhere. There are more traps around here as well. Quality 
Penalty 50, that's garbage. Let's see what the murderer had on him. Probably nothing really great. Yeah, they, they don't tend to. Actually, the dagger is good. Not better than what I'm currently using, though. Well, it is, in a way. It does, what, three more minimum? Two more maximum damage. But we lose 10% crit, so no. Alright, so we're just going to break all this stuff down. Bunch of low-level crap. All right, holy crap, that was interesting. Should have flashed. Oh no, you should not have flash bank point banked him. I think we did the best we could do. All right, so let's first let's drop that. Then we're gonna break apart his dagger. Make some repair kits. And get our equipment back in good condition. All right, woo! That was fun. I thought I thought for sure we were gonna bite it. I thought for sure we were gonna bite it. I also was very risky running through here knowing that those traps were there. That there was that crawler trap. I think there was an acid blob trap also around here, but I think my grenades destroyed it for us. It's tough not immediately uh, wanting to run. But I think you guys would probably find it really annoying if I fled from every single combat and zone. Besides, I'm viewing this as training for hard mode, which I may do next time. Hard mode will be interesting because to actually flee a zone you must actually use, I think it's 50 action points? As opposed to just spending 25 to flee in combat. That's... That's quite a change if you use zoning. Oop, we don't want to be here. In your games. That is a bunch of lunatics down there that are summoning something, I think. We're going to have to take the long way around. We might win that fight. The issue is that lunatics, their attacks don't care about my armor. Not particularly. Maybe we have a little bit of frost, fire, or electrical resistance. But we'll get biolocationed, we'll uh, get frosted and chilled, and they will be very, very difficult. They are, after all, psychics, which are extremely powerful in this game. Hello, rat hounds. Well done. Don't need you. We'll keep the forward grip for crafting. Wow, that ambush was actually very nasty. I'll also say this, getting Crippling Struck so often makes me really appreciate Crippling Strike as a 
as a way of dealing with heavily, um, heavy strength, uh, sorry, sledgehammer wielders. Oh, I gotta be careful, I think. No, it's a different spot. There's rat hounds up here. They're over in that area. The lock, we need an MK... Oh, uh, no, we can use an MK2 lockpick. Okay, we'll take that then and go back for the dude's quest area. Let's explore the rest of this tunnel first so I can mark down which areas I did not walk out of it in. Oh, actually, we should just walk in that direction. And we did not explore east. But I know what's there. It's this room. Actually, we should just... I should have just walked over there just to get it on the map. Oh. We did not explore all of this. I thought we did. We might as well get it all on the map now. We did not explore south. Right. We. I ended up walking into combat here before I was ready for it, but we still won. Just to get it on the map, we're gonna go this way so I can get the connection. I can also now remove that statement I put, that note. Right, we had the lockpick. Let's go ahead and get the stuff that is waiting for us over here. I guess we can speed up time as well. I really like that alteration that they've done to Underrail. I love the speed up movement. That was... Granted, I don't really have a problem walking around without it. In fact, I did that all with every single episode with Garrett. And you'll note I don't walk around with it uh, by default with, with Gabriel either. here. We can die by walking on a single trap here. Like, I don't think walking on an HE mine would kill us. Because these are only MK2s from what I can see. What we're here for entropic recurrence and 20 mushroom brew.
Well, dude's quest done. I guess we should bring him back the brew right now. I'm not drinking the brew, by the way, because we actually use throwing in combat. And so I don't want our dexterity being lowered by two points. Yeah, I don't, I don't want that. I also don't really want a perception being lowered. Because we, as you've seen, with a four perception, we can detect traps. Actually, right there was with a three perception, because we're wearing a helmet. All right, let's walk this back to rail crossing. You know, it just occurs to me. Oh, well, hold on. Well, actually, we should finish that thought, Tim, before you start another one. People probably uploaded their 40K games to YouTube, haven't they? When I was first playing Warhammer 40K, back in 2001, 2003, there was no YouTube, and the internet was quite different. That was uh, when GeoCities was around, right? AOL was there. Looking back at that, that's pretty amazing. It just took about a decade for that stuff to fade. Makes me wonder what will happen a decade from now as well. Will YouTube even be around? I don't know. Probably would be my guess, but it will probably have some competition as well. How's it going, man? I've opened the locker. His eyes turned to fire. And? And? What'd you find, man? Mushroom brew. Freaking mushroom brew. 20 bottles. Why is it in a warehouse full of traps and mushroom brew? How'd you really know about all this? Visions, man, visions. I don't know about the mines, though. I didn't put them there. That's what you're replying. Um, can I have the brew now? Ah, uh, well, take it. Thank you very, very much, man. Now, if you excuse me, I have to test the quality of this beauty. <laughs> he does not get the chance to taste the nectar, however. In an instant, he becomes voiceless. His joyful eyes turn vacant, and his smile collapses into utter slack-jawedness. He then slumps forward with his hair dropping, drooping over and concealing his face, thus marking the beginning of another session, another vision. Fortunately, this time around, his words reach you with more clarity than previously. Holmes, we must find caves. Must reach, like, seriously a, a lot of walking. Ingredients, he must fetch. <laughs> Journey. Journey, he shrugs. Journey. He lifts his head. Life settles back into his desolate eyes, and a smile reconstructs itself out of a drooling mess. His eyes focus, and so do his thoughts, but... But first, we must drink, man. It's as though a spark has ignited his gaze, the life in him, and he snaps out of it. Only now does he appear to be fully himself again. He gawks at you, confused as a hopper in front of a distorted mirror, and smiles. Huh? How's it going, man? Damn. Time sure flies when you're enjoying the brew, man. Okay, we're not going to talk about the vision, because we could, we could, but then we get the opportunity to do the quest, and I don't think I want to do the, that quest right now. I would like to wait until I'm, like, around level 16 before we do it. We should be able to handle it at that point. We can probably handle it now, actually, but I will wait two levels. Can you tell me something interesting? Did I ever talk about brewers? They are fascinating, highly social creatures. Dangerous. But still fascinating. I should know. I'll live with them for a month. That's how I got this scar. He points to his forehead. Take a closer look. No matter how hard you look, you fail to see any scars. All in all, respect their territory. Don't mess with them. And they won't mess with you. Unless they see you. Cheers. I'll be going now, dude. Hello, barkeep. Back again for some of that tasty mushroom brew friend. Let's see what you got. I'm not really interested in mushroom brew, though. I am interested, though, 
in your Rat Hound barbecues. And we'll take some hardcore chips. Oh, Jared walked in. All right, we didn't complete that quest yet for the good doctor. Hey, Miles, you still haven't replenished your inventory. We'll come back here and solve the doctor's issue about someone stealing stuff later. Hello, Travis, I have anything to sell to you? Oh, you'll buy goggles, huh? They're mechanical goggles, too. If I buy one of these for 12 Charons... Uh, not worth it. Okay. Let's just vendor them, then. Alright. That was fun. Quest completed, almost at halfway to level 15 already. And I think we'll stop by Foundry and look to see what metal's available there. Is it just me or is the... the stuff getting larger from that barrel? What if it fills the whole screen eventually? Okay, let's head back over to Foundry. And visit the merchant and look to see if we... I think my current sledgehammer is made with level 85 normal steel. I think, might be 89. So we'll see if she's selling anything better today. Welcome again. What can I get you? Let me see what you have on offer. Of course. Do note that we don't have any of our famous Thai Chrome Ally components at the moment. Uh, the mine is closed right now, but hopefully it'll be back up and running sometime soon. 81. No, this stuff is far worse. I have nothing she wants either. Well, since we're here, I guess we'll investigate some of the surrounds. So let's head up north. I don't so I don't want to explore Foundry yet. I don't want to do their quest. I'd like one more level first. Preferably two. This way, I can handle Baylor. Oh, we should be able to handle him at that point. Weaponsmith will give us plus five crit with our hammer. And the extra stats will also be useful. Okay, so we first off... Uh, D -D. We can go south here as well. Sometimes there's a battle between the Iron Heads and Foundry that occurs here. It's a massive fight between like 10 of each side. And no one seems to care if you do or don't loot the bodies. It's a great way to get some riot gear from the fallen Foundry. Hey, a merchant! Hello, sir. Another getting lots of random encounters today. I really like this. The senior underrailer is quick to designate you as a potential customer. After taking a good look at you with his keen eyes, of course, for he seems to be a traveling merchant of some kind. And the heavy load on his back must be his inventory. Uh, greetings, youngster. Need some weapons and gear? I got a few things a guy like you might find interesting. Wanna take a look, eh? Wanna? Well, first, how's life been treating you? Meh. 
Not too bad. Lately, I've been starting to feel my age. It takes some effort moving these old bones from one place to the next, you know? And as the years go by, the distance seems greater and greater. But a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do if he wants to earn some half-decent coin. I'll tell you that. Man's gotta do what he's born to do, so just sit back and wait. Is that how that song went? From the Tom Sawyer musical? Are beasts and bandits giving you trouble? Please, I'm a veteran, youngster. A true veteran. Been roaming under rails since before you got the courage to crawl out of your mama's tummy. <laughs> I got quite a few tricks up my sleeve. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Interested? You better... Instead, you better worry about them coins you got on you, because I got some fine stuff to trade, eh? Wanna? Yeah, let me see what you have. This is nice. We can vendor some of the ammo to him. And he'll buy a gun. Let's buy some of this. Let's also see what he's selling. Sturdy vest, quality 88. I think we have better, though. Stingball grenade. We could really use that. Let's buy that from him. Nothing else I'm interested in. Sturdy Vest is tempting. We might be able to make something similar to what we're currently wearing. But I think we'll pass. Take the rest of it in cash. Take care, old timer. Silencer. Actually, will he buy that? He will. He should have just checked around the corner. There's a silencer there. Wait, he'll buy bolts as well? He will. Let's, let's continue to clear out all this stuff. So, we will mark uh, D and E. The faceless are waiting up here. I'm not going to go up there at the moment. I do, however, want to get all the fog of war gone off the map. I always feel compelled to do this. I I must. I must do it. Oh, oh there isn't a south. There's a, a stairs that goes up. Let's see where this takes us. Oh, we've been here before? Hmm. Alright. We're gonna try something. I don't know if we're ready for it. I don't think we are. But we're gonna try... ...to explore... This passage. This passage is dangerous. There's a group of iron heads here, and it's a large group of iron heads. I think there's like eight or nine of them. There's also a lot of traps in the surrounding area, which is why I currently have my whatchamacallit off. I don't think the light matters for traps, but just in case it does. It helps I have this stuffed bat at this moment. It's like someone... We saw some blood down there as well. It's like someone didn't make it here. It's like they crawled and died. Okay. Now, there's an iron head right up ahead. Iron head up ahead? What's true? We're gonna have to hope that was all the traps that we could... That there was out here. Because now, we have to deal with the iron heads. I don't know if we can handle them. I don't think I can walk one more space up. We can. Alright! 
so let's do this. Oof. It's a bomber. I kind of need to kill the bomber, so let's try that first. Wow. We're going to adrenaline. I actually want to run the other way, but I'm not going to get a chance to do that at the moment. Because there's more traps around here. Hello. They're all incapacitated. Ew. I think we have to run. Because we're about to lose our... Yeah, I think we have to run. So, what I'm hoping is that the ones that are incapacitated will wake up and not know where I am and or stagger over each other, which will give me a few seconds to deal with this guy. Okay, they found me. Now everyone else is going to come down here too. We need the heal. I just want some more distance. Oh, we're gonna get a grenade, actually, Tim. Oh. That one missed us, thankfully. Oh, we're gonna we're we're gonna die. There's too many of them. Yep, too many. All right, so we can't we can't handle this fight. Not at the moment. All right, that sucks. Is there anything else I can do to help me win? We'll try one more time, but I think this is I think this is just not going to work. Well, and it's definitely not going to work if they resist the stun attempt. She's going to move back and throw, a, and throw a grenade. Oh, she's not. She is. It missed, though. Wow. There go all of our shields. Yeah, we're, we're dead. We, we can't do this battle. We'll still try. That didn't go in the right place, so we didn't kill that one grenadier.
Well, this is super awkward. Because I don't have the movement it needs to close with them. <laughs> Take some morphine now. I need to kill all of the bombers, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. That psychic's gonna be frightfully annoying as well. I'm not going to be able to kill her. I this this has to land. get bursted by the other guy. Actually, they won't even have to burst. He's just gonna one-shot one me. Okay, and that's it. So no, we can't do this fight yet. Too tough for us. Too tough. I can't sucker just one of them away from that area as well. There's something useful that they're guarding. Uh, it's quest related, a lore item, which will help you with the faceless. I'd like to have had it, but it's just it's just not gonna work. Okay, so what does it take to make a sting ball grenade? Oh, we need to re we need to read that recipe first. Starter mixture. So it won't be that difficult to create it. Starter mixture requires just 15 uh, chemistry, but I have no chemistry, so we're not making that yet. I don't know if, yeah, I think chemistry is on the table for something we will eventually learn for the grenades. I have to remember what my build looks like. That's a shame, too. That was a lot of time attempting to do that. All right, well, let's uh, let's go up north. And there's another fight up here I don't think we can do. <laughs> um, no, even if I'm using um, the Rat Hound Barbecue, I still don't have what I need to do that fight. We have to wait. So there's a group of lunatics over there, and they, too, are too strong for us at this moment. Closing with them is difficult from this side as well. Okay, 
Let's see, so we did explore north at least. Oh, there's traps here. Yeah, traps and dogs. And a group of, very small group of iron heads around as well. Oh, and we just walked right on that trap that will, yep, bring everyone else up here to investigate what's going on. Found it, I literally saw the trap just as I walked on it. Now the dogs should still be up here. The iron heads, oh, are also still up here. All right, let's kill, ooh, a, the iron, a bomber and a demolisher. We'll eat this. We will sprint to gain some more distance. Next round. Stunned. Very nice. Let's be attacking him again. Good God, you have a lot of hit points. I want to stun this guy. Make sure he can't run away. Still didn't kill this guy. Wow. Dog to start. I think we'll move towards him. Ah, I thought for sure the mine would help me kill him. To say we're about to get a grenade and we got it let's make him come to us rather than charging him okay oof even two of them were still tricky MK3 HE grenade. A decent pistol. Boots are junk, so is the armor. MK3 lockpick. We'll hold on to one of those. Nice, some MK2 grenades. Good thing we focused on this guy first. And a bunch of other things we don't need. I guess we'll just take those. Let's leave some of this garbage here. So we don't need this. We don't need that. Everything else I do want. How's my equipment? Good shape at the moment. Let's take the dog's heart. Delicious. Quick save. So we do that that battle again. And let's see what's in this direction. Easy. Yep. Didn't explore the easy direction. It might actually be an easy direction to go in. Isn't there a lighter or a cigar in this? 
booze. You're close. I was thinking two-point Adi item. Alright. Nice. Now we're back here again. So now we explored this. We're not going to explore north if we don't want to interrupt the faceless. Let's go back. Oh! Can I handle that? I don't think I can. So to the east, there's a group of iron heads or lurkers. I can't remember which one. And they're very difficult. I'm out of... Mm, I'm out of the grenades I would like. Uh, flashbangs. Let's take the tunnel down. I think you can handle large Azurai, Tim? I don't know if you can do that either. Let's head back to Southgate Station and use some of this dynamite we have. And we won't play for too much longer, everyone. In fact, I think once this stuff bat fades, we'll call the session. So, a few more minutes. I think we can at least blow up one or two more um, caved-in walls with all the dynamite we've got. It's such a shame. Just don't have... I need more armor. This is one of the few games where your defenses are as important as your offensive skills. Normally, in games like this, I always view your offensive skills as being significantly more important. This is because normally in games like this, you always want to be attacking, and you can often not worry about the enemy reaching or attacking you. That's not the case in this game. You're almost always alone, so you don't have other companions to take hits off of you. Generally. It's somewhat difficult to use the terrain to your advantage all the time. And depending on what, the, what type of character it is, you won't be able to get off an ambush. Oh, I should break down some of this garbage. Cycle. Actually, those boots are worth a bit. Maybe we'll hold on to those. Oh, hold on. That's worth quite a bit, too. 3,000? We'll hold on to that, too. I think those are worth keeping around. It's like in... Uh, like any real-time strategy game. You want to always be increasing your army's attack power first. I guess we'll just walk down here and blow up the caves, the walls. Excuse to kill a few more rat hounds. Can leave this garbage skin. Actually, do I want to? We should. Do the standard thing. Where's your leather armor? Shinder isn't anything quite like this for. Well, actually, there is for metal bits. No. There's nothing. You can't kill a creature and get metal unless it's a robot. And they tend not to drop a number of scrap that you can actually make a repair kit with. 
Right, those rocks. Let's go, let's go ahead and blow them up and get this on the map. I think we've even explored this entire area before, so I don't think there's anything here for us. Yep, that's correct. All right, everyone. Well, actually, we'll head up. We'll blow up another pile of rocks, and then that will do it for us. When we come back, we'll explore more tunnels. I would like to at least be level 15 before I start Foundry. That Those extra points into melee will be really, really handy for dealing with the Iron Heads. We've already seen Iron Heads beat us up quite a bit. And maybe we can get lucky and get some better metal, which we can use to craft some, uh, a, even a better hammer than what we're currently using. Oh, I'm out of repair kits as well, Tim. Metal ones. That is something I have to cons remember all the time. Gabriel goes through re metal repair kits very quickly. Everything he's wearing is metal. Let's clear this room. There should be some rat hounds up here, and then that will do it for us. I'm not even afraid of you, rat hounds. You pose no significant threat to me at all. I have to miss like 20 attacks in a row, and even then, you'd have to crit significantly more. Like, all your attacks would have to crit, every single creature would have to crit, and even it had to be a high crit for you to even threaten me, so. Not worried about you guys at all. We want more visors. Visors are nice because they will be used for the eyewear. Uh, eyewear. Headwear for us for helmets. I think about it, Gabriel didn't wear a helmet, did he? But I f hmm. Maybe we won't be using one all the time. Maybe we'll, we'll, we will use a balaclava instead later. So I get this on the map. Now I'll need to go back and pick up more grenades. I really need more flashbangs. We'll have to find someone who can sell them. Alright, everyone. Well, that will do it for us. Thank you guys for watching. So, we did a lot more exploring. We found we are not powerful enough to defeat that group of Iron Heads. We need probably at least one level, maybe two, before we can take them on. Another feat would be helpful. Ah, better armor would be helpful as well. In any case, we will stop here. I want to thank you all for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.